Thank you for the kind introduction. Uh, good day, everyone. Uh, I am Edward, uh, the, field uh, the field application scientist from GenScript, uh, and currently I'm based in Singapore. It's a great pleasure for me to have such a wonderful opportunity to be invited on this, uh, in this webinar in Korea. So in this webinar, I will share an overview about the COVID-19 with an updated information. Uh, as everyone knows that, uh, currently the hot topic that's being discussed and hopefully goes away real soon is the coronavirus. The widely spread of this deadly disease um, has sparked alarm worldwide. So I wish everyone in Korea, uh, please stay safe and healthy. So what are coronavirus? And to date, what are the health workers are currently doing in order to stop the disease? So um, before I start to talk about my presentation, I would like to put up this slide that show that the number of the articles that is related to coronavirus that have been published to date. So as you can see that, you know, uh, same as the scale and uh, the spread of the virus globally, and the, the researchers are currently working very hard in order to understand and characterize the virus. So in just a short amount of time, uh, just five months precisely, uh, there are more than 8,900 of the articles that are being published. And this just shows how eager we are in order to find the solutions that against uh, this disease. So uh, today, I will update you guys with some information and our current understanding to the SARS-CoV-2 virus, and then the detection methods that are currently available in the market in order to detect the SARS-CoV-2 virus, as well as the current progress of this vaccine and drug development against the COVID-19. So when we look back at the history, uh, the coronaviruses have caused two epidemics in the recent years. Um, for example, the SARS virus, which was first reported in Guangdong in the end of 2002, had caused more than 8,000 people globally and killed more than 700 people. And uh, the MERS virus, which was first reported in Saudi Arabia uh, in the end of uh, 2012, and since then, about 2,500 of MERS cases have been identified across 27 countries and have killed more than 800 people. And now, we are facing the threats from the SARS-CoV-2 virus uh, that caused the COVID-19 disease. Uh, and it was first reported in Wuhan in the end of 2019 and has now spread it to worldwide. So as of 4th of May, the SARS-CoV-2 virus has infected more than 3.58 million people worldwide and killed more than uh, 251,000 people. And the most worrying bit is the number is still increasing. So on 11 of March, the WHO declared a COVID-19 outbreak as a pandemic. So as I described in my previous slide that the spread of the virus across 187 countries and had killed more than 200, uh, 251,000 people globally as of uh, 4th of May, the severely con uh, affected countries including China, Italy, uh, the Spain, uh, India, and Malaysia have implemented an aggressive measurement, such as lockdown, the city, and even the entire nation. So while this measurement may seem to slow down the spread of the virus, it has disrupted uh, the countries in many ways, such as the manufacturing in China, um, including the medical supply. So before the pandemic, uh, the China was the world's uh, largest ma uh, mass manufacturer. So the shutdown of the operations has led to the shortage of the protective gear, such as the mask, uh, the protective suits uh, to the front line of the health workers. And this has led to the other countries started to stockpile and even to ban the exportation of these uh, protective gears uh, to the other countries. So the experts has warned that this measurement could have actually worsened the shortfall and led to the other poorer countries uh, more vulnerable to the spread of this disease. Additionally, uh, the uh, you know, this pandemic actually has hit the global demand and supply so badly that the OECD has uh, predicted global contractions with the GDP growth slashed down to 2.4% from the 2.9%. Uh, 
And uh, the world leaders have also called upon the cancellations of the major events uh, this year, including the Tokyo uh, Olympic 2020. So in a nutshell, um, this pandemic actually has hit uh, our daily life badly. So before we talk about coronavirus, we should understand what virus is. So the virus is very different from the bacteria. Uh, it's composed of a simple structure uh, that composed of a nucle uh, the, the capsid proteins uh, in order to protect the genetic material, such as the viral DNA or the viral RNA. And the shapes of the virus can be varied, including the spherical-like uh, virus such as the influenza, the helical-like structure such as the tobacco mosaic virus, the polygonal-like uh, virus such as the adenovirus, as well as the complicated bacterial fudge that include of the, uh, of the polygonal head and the rod shaped tail with a long filament. And the coronavirus is just one of them. Why is it being called a coronavirus? This is, uh, well, this is due to uh, the crown like structure that was observed under the microscope. So here I put up a slide to describe the source of the SARS CoV 2 virus. Now, uh, an ex uh, an coronavirus, uh, coronavirus expert, Professor Wang Ling Park from Duke NUS in uh, Singapore, uh, had given a wonderful webinar just a month ago with regards to uh, the SARS CoV 2 virus. According to Professor Wang Ling Park, majority of the coronaviruses are actually originated from the bat. The researchers have found that the unique immune response of the bat has made them a uh, reservoir species for many of the viruses type. So when these viruses infect the other organism, it can cause the destructive uh, uh, diseases to the others. So fortunately, um, we don't come into contact with the bats very often. And so these viruses will need to infect intermediate hosts such as the pig uh, or the camels before they transfect to human. Taking the SARS as an example, it is believed that the spread of this virus was through the seabed cat and the MERS virus was through the camel. And now, uh, the scientists suggested that the pangolin could be the prime suspect for, uh, uh, for this disease, although a more conclusive data has yet to be found. So here I show you an image of the SARS-CoV-2 virus that released by the National Institute of Allergy and Infection Disease. So the coronaviruses is a large group of the viruses. Uh, they are the positive sense single strand RNA virus. Um, well, so I mean, uh, the genetic materials are surrounded by the envelope proteins uh, with the spike proteins. So there are different types of the coronaviruses that can cause the respiratory diseases, and some can cause uh, the gastrointestinal disease. Well, the respiratory diseases uh, can range from the common cold to uh, the pneumonia. But very often, these symptoms are mild. And some can cause the severe symptoms, such as the SARS, the MERS, and the COVID-19 disease. So how can uh, the coronavirus hijack our human cell? So uh, the coronavirus with the spike proteins can mediate the infection through binding to a specific target receptor, known as the angiotensin converting enzyme 2, or we call it an ACE2 receptor. And the spike protein contains of two subunits, the S1 subunit and the S2 subunit. And the S1 subunit contains the receptor binding domain and a non-RBD uh, region, whereby the S2 subunit has been uh, found to mediate the membrane fusion between uh, the virus and the cell. So with the understanding uh, of the uh, SARS-CoV-2 structure, the researchers have developed several types of the detections, uh, ASA, in order to detect uh, the SARS-CoV-2 virus. Firstly, the nucleic acid-based detection method, including the use of the next-generation sequencing, the QRT-PCR, isothermal amplification, and CRISPR. And the serology-based detection ASA, including the use of the ELISA, immunoluminescent immunoassay, a colloidal gold immunoassay, uh, can also be used in order to detect the antigen or the antibody in the sample. Other clinical diagnostic tools, such as the use of a chest CT imaging, can also be used for the detection. 
So the hallmark of the COVID-19 infections is the presence of the bilateral nodular and peripheral ground glass with a consolidated pulmonary opacity. Recently, uh, studies have shown that the blood test can also be used in order to evaluate the predictive factors for the COVID-19. The results have shown an abnormal level of the elevations in the uh, lactic dehydrogenase and a decreased level in the lymphocytes count, especially the CD3+, CD4+, and CDA+, T cell. And these blood tests are regularly being carried out in the clinic. But today, I'm going to spend uh, time to discuss about the nucleic acid-based detection assay, as well as the serology-based detection method. So uh, the sequencing of the viral genome using the next generation sequencing in combination with the epidemiology data help us to characterize and understand the identity of the virus and so to let us know how the virus is changing and also how it is being transmitted. So on the 24th of January, uh, the first SARS-CoV-2 genome was published in the New England Journal of Medicine. And as of May of, uh, 4th of May, there were over 16,000 of the genomes have been shared to the GISEID and the GenBank database in order to help the researchers in uh, the study as well as the drugs and vaccine development. Uh, additionally, the success in uh, sequencing the viral genomes enabled the researchers to uh, develop the PCR-based detection method. So currently, there are a couple of uh, companies have already developed uh, the nucleic acid uh, sequencing kit for production, such as the Tanjin, the Fountain Genetics and its China-based joint venture, the Arbor Bioscience with its coronavirus targeted uh, panel. So uh, the, use of the, uh, the use of this next generation sequencing requires a sophisticated of the bioinformatic tools and a fast data uh, processing and a large data storage, which can be costly that may hamper the wider use of this technology for detection. So now I would like to uh, show this uh, Result. I believe that many of you may have already come across this result. It was published in a PLOS one by uh, Dr. Peter Foster uh, just a couple of weeks ago. So these results basically describe uh, the phylogenetic network analysis of the SARS COVID genome. So in brief, uh, the researchers from the UK and uh, the Germany have reconstructed the early uh, evolution uh, paths of the COVID-19 in the humans. So uh, the team actually used the data from the viral genome sample from across uh, the world between the 24th of December 2019 to uh, the 4th of March 2020. Uh, so through the analysis, the researcher revealed uh, three distinct um, variants of the COVID-19 consisting of a cluster of a closely re uh, related lineage, which they described as a variant type A, variant type B, and a variant type C. So the author uh, found out that uh, the closest type of the COVID-19 variant to the one that discovered in the bat, which they label as a variant type A, was present in uh, Wuhan. But uh, surprisingly, this variant actually um, was not the city's predominant type. And this variant was seen in uh, the Americans, um, the Japanese who had lived in uh, Wuhan. And a large number of the patients with this variant type A uh, were from uh, US and Australia. So the Wuhan uh, major virus type B uh, was, preva uh, was prevalent in the patients across uh, the East Asia region. And however, this variant did not travel much beyond. So uh, with further mutations indicating a foundation effect or resistance against this variant type uh, outside the East Asia regions. So on the other hand, the variant type C which was majorly found in the European countries, was seen in the early patients uh, in Italy, uh, in UK, Sweden, and Spain. Um, this variant was not found in uh, the China uh, mainland samples, but was found in Singapore, Hong Kong, and uh, South Korea. So uh, this uh, study actually um, could have helped the researcher to, make, uh, to project the future global hotspots of the disease transmissions and search. And also, uh, this could also help us to well prepare and contain further um, spread of this disease worldwide. So now let's come back to the nucleic acid detection methods. 
So the QRT-PCR uh, has been shown as a mainstream detection method for COVID-19. The mechanism is very simple, with an addition of the fluorescent substances to the reactions. And through the use of a special PCR instrument, uh, the real-time fluorescence can be detected and the results will be read. And this technology can perform the quantitative calculations on the PCR template. And there are several improved versions of this technology. With the use of a Tamman probe a method, the dual or multiplex fluorescent PCR. Currently, there are over 100 companies have developed or are still developing the QRT PCR detection insight in order to improve the sensitivity and the specificity of this assay. The isothermal amplification has also been proven for the COVID-19 detection without the loss of the sensitivity and the specificity. So unlike the QRT-PCR that required the change of the temperature during the amplification, this technology uses only one temperature for amplification. And therefore, the requirement of a special PCR instrument is low. And lastly, uh, the CRISPR is a well-known uh, technology in the field of genome editing. But recently, it has been shown that it has the ability for the COVID-19 detection. So it utilized the crispr cas 13 based RNA uh, detection technology they call Sherlock. It was developed by the Broad Institute and Harvard Institute. So the principle is very straightforward. Under the guidance of the guide RNA and after binding uh, to the specific of the viral RNA, it will then trigger the cutting ability of the cas 13 on the viral RNA and the reporter. And then the mixture, will be loaded onto a commercial detection uh, ASIC for data analysis. Another group of the scientists have developed a similar technology called HOMES with the use of the CAS-12 endonuclease. And uh, the principle works the same as uh, CAS-13. The only difference is this technology requires the conversions of the RNA into DNA. And so here I show you a table that summarizes the advantages and disadvantages of the nucleic acid phase detection method. So the use of the NGS can provide a high accuracy sequencing data, but uh, the, uh, the require of a specific PCR instrument uh, is, uh, sorry, uh, the high cost of an instrument uh, with the uh, complicated um, bioinformatics system uh, may have hampered the widely spread use of this uh, technology for detection. But the QRT PCR, QRT PCR is commonly used due to its high sensitivity and specificity. However, this technology requires a specific PCR instrument that can be costly, and then um, the high force negative traits have been reported recently. The isothermal amplification uh, can achieve a similar sensitivity and specificity, but uh, this technology requires a specific design of the primers because the studies have shown that the non-specific binding of the primers may lead to the false positive result. And lastly, the CRISPR has been shown to have the ability to detect uh, the COVID-19. So um, it has the ability, as I mentioned, to detect the viral DNA and viral RNA. The experts have suggested that this technology should combine with the nucleic acid amplification technology in order to increase the sensitivity. So um, the sequencing data have shown that this viral genome consists of approximately 30,000 base pairs that encode 10 different unique proteins, as I shown in this picture here. So uh, the researcher designed, uh, uh, developed the PCR-based detection assay based on this sequence that encode the specific uh, unique proteins. So the entire nucleic acid detection workflow includes the sample collections, the nucleic acid extraction, the real-time PCR, and the results evaluation. And I will step-by-step step guide you through all this workflow. So uh, the first step involves the biological specimen collections. Here are all the specimen types that can be collected. As we know that the SARS-CoV-2 virus can cause uh, the respiratory illness. And therefore, the respiratory system is the main target uh, for sample collection. So the, the, the respiratory system consists of the upper and lower respiratory tract. 
And the most commonly used method uh, to collect the samples include uh, the nasal swab, the oral swab, the sputum, bronchoalveolar fluid, and the respiratory tract fluid. Just a side note here, uh, uh, we know that the ACE2 receptor is highly expressed in the human lung. And therefore, uh, the results will be more accurate if you measure the samples, like the bronchoalveolar fluid and the respiratory tract fluid. But uh, the in, uh, this invasive method, uh, collection method, may have, uh, could have caused uh, the discomfort feeling uh, to uh, the patients. So depending on the state of the illness, the blood samples or the conjunctiva swabs can also be collected for detection. And the recent studies have shown that the RNA extracted from the stool can be used for detections. And this has further supported the fact that uh, the species and the saliva are the two most commonly uh, transmission pathway for the virus. So it is then followed by the nucleic acid extraction. So as I mentioned in my previous slide, that majority of the submitted samples are oral swabs or sputum. And this poses the challenges to the researcher in order to extract a high quality of the RNA for detections due to its high uh, viscosity and also the protein concentration. And therefore, these samples need to be liquefied under uh, special treatment, such as the sonication. So uh, after the extractions, the qPCR is then carried out using the treatment probe-based ASN. So here I show you a simplified diagram that, uh, uh, that, uh, to, uh, that shows how the treatment probe-based ASN works. But due to the time limitations, I'm not going to explain uh, too much in detail. But what I would like to highlight here is with the use of the treatment probe-based assay, it allows the researcher to target the specific biogene expressions of the submitted uh, specimen, uh, specimen. So alternatively, the isothermal amplification, such as the use of the uh, reverse transcription LAM assay, can also be used for detection. Well, the advantage of using this method is uh, it doesn't require uh, the, um, the change of the temperatures uh, during the steps of the amplification, and therefore it doesn't require a specific PCR instrument. For an example, after the sample collections and RNA extractions, the amplification uh, can be done under control of a selected temperature. And depending on the reported dye use, the positive and the negative samples can be distinguished either by the naked eyes or using a UV light. So in order to uh, accelerate the ASA development, both the China CDC and WHO have made the suggestions to target uh, these three genes uh, in uh, the SARS-CoV-2 viral genome, including the off one ab gene, the E gene, and N gene. And uh, for your information, there are two different targeted locations in the off one ab gene, off one ab locations, and also the location that encode the RNA-dependent RNA polymerase. So these are the sequences for the primers and probes in order to target uh, these four locations that were released by WHO and the China CDC. So uh, based on these sequences, GenScript has developed our own detection assay kit with a one-step single-gene detection assay or a one-step two-plex uh, detection assay with the combination of the N and O gene and R and E gene. So uh, GenScript had also conducted quality assurance in order to guarantee uh, all, of, uh, all of our materials meet its highest qualifications, such as that all primers and probes are HPLC certified, no CT value was detected in the non-template control, um, in order to ensure that there is no cross-contamination. Additionally, uh, our positive uh, gene control shows a CT value ranging from 25 to 30, indicating a good quality and high sensitivity of the primers and the probes. So, although the virus nucleic acid uh, QRT-PCR test has become the standard method for diagnosis of a SARS-CoV-2 infections, these real-time PCR test kits have many limitations. Um, first, uh, the high false negative rates have been reported recently. And second, this test only looks for the genetic materials of the virus, for instance, in saliva, nasal, or anal swabs. One huge drawback is that they only give a positive result 
when the virus is still present. That means that this test unable to tell the individuals that has gone through the infections, the recover and the clearance of the virus from the body. And therefore, in order to overcome this limitation, uh, the researchers have developed the serology based detection method. So this test allowed us to have a better understanding of the epidemiology of the COVID-19. On 17 of February, an article was published in Emerging Microbes and Infections has proven the feasibility for the uh, use of a serologic testing to confirm the infection. So the beauty of this test is it allows us to quickly identify a large number of the infected patients and asymptomatic carriers in an accurate, rapid and simple manner in order to prevent the virus transmission and ensure the timely treatments of the patients. So this test is attractive due to its short relatively amount of times for detections and allow us to detect the active immune response in the patient. So the serial bait test uh, include the use of an ELISA, a chemiluminescent immunoassay, and a colloidal gold immunoassay. So this immunoassay relies on the capability of uh, the antibodies to recognize the macromolecule known as uh, the antigens, or a regions on the antigens which the antibody can bind to, known as the epitope. Taking the uh, SARS-CoV-2 virus as examples, this virus consists of a multiple proteins, and each protein contains of a multiple epitope. So by utilizing the principle of antibody and antigen binding, the antibody can be used in order to detect uh, the antigen, proving that the presence of the virus in the sample. Or we can slightly modify uh, the assay in order to detect the host antibodies uh, that against the SARS-CoV-2 virus. For an example, we know that you know, after the infections, uh, our, in, uh, our immune cells will be stimulated and uh, produce the antibodies. The IgM uh, as a primary antibody followed by the IgG. So similarly using uh, the principle to find the host antibodies, we can indirectly tell the individuals uh, whether or not this individual is infected uh, by the virus. So the ELISA is a plant-based uh, technology that allows us to quantify and to detect uh, the substance, including the proteins, uh, the peptides, uh, the antigens, and so on. So in brief, the antigen must be uh, immobilized on the plate and then conjugated with the antibodies that link with the enzymes. So the detection is done by assessing uh, through the enzyme activity by incubating with a substrate in order to produce a measurable product such as the change of the color, as I shown in this picture, indicating the presence of the substance uh, in the sample. Or we can slightly modify the assay in order to detect the host IgG or IgM antibody in the blood samples. The chemiluminescent immunoassay works as a, a similar principle as the ELISA. The only difference is the use of the chemical probes in order to generate the light emissions uh, in the chemical reaction. So uh, the colloidal gold immunochromatography strip assay is a more rapid and a direct measurement in order to, uh, to detect uh, the surface antigens of the SARS-CoV-2 virus or to detect uh, the host IgG or IgM against the SARS-CoV-2 virus using the virus antigen products. So here is a simplified diagram that shows how the strip assay works. So the strip consists of a conjugated pad uh, that fill with uh, the antigens that are conjugated with uh, the, uh, the gold nanoparticle. So when a, a sample that full of the host uh, IgG or IgM is loaded onto the strip, the host antibodies can recognize uh, the antigens that is conjugated with the gold nanoparticles. And then as it flows through the nitrocellular membrane, this side of the strip uh, is filled with the capture antibody to target uh, the host IgG or host IgM. So the detection can be, uh, is done by assessing uh, the test line. So when the sample is uh, positive, this test line will show up. And if it's negative, it will remain as blank. 
So this table summarized advantages and the disadvantages of the nucleic acid based detection assay, as well as the serial based detections method. The nucleic acid based detections method is a gold standard due to its high sensitivity and specificity. However, this technology requires the use of a specific PCR instrument. And then uh, a high false negative rates have been reported recently, as I mentioned earlier. In contrast, the serial based detection assay is fast, is cheap, and without the use of a specific PCR instrument. But the drawbacks of using the serial based detection assays are sensitivity and specificity limitations. And also, uh, the detections, there, there could be a delay in the detections due to uh, the requirement of an incubation period to generate a sufficient amount of the host antibodies. And also, this assay can be easily disrupted by the background noise, such as the presence of the cytokines that may lead to the false positive result. Therefore, uh, the scientists and the experts have suggested uh, to combine the PCR and the serial based test in order to increase the sensitivity of the testing. And by having these two tests, it would allow the confirmation of the infection rather than relying on a single test. So here I show you how GenScript could help uh, the researcher in asset development. So to test for the SARS-CoV-2 virus or antigens using the antibodies, GenScript provides uh, the nucleocapsid proteins and the spike protein as an antigen, as well as uh, the antibodies in order to target the spike X1 and the nucleocapsid proteins. The test for the anti-SARS-CoV-2 uh, host antibodies uh, by using the virus antigens, apart from the antigens and the antibodies that I mentioned, uh, GenStream have uh, the anti-human IgG and the uh, anti-human IgM as a capture antibody for detection purpose. Here is a classic example that shows that how GenScript helps the researcher to develop the assay. And so this article was published on the 24th of April, in which uh, the surrogate neutralizing uh, antibody detection assay was developed by Professor Wang Lingfa uh, from Duke NUS in Singapore. So this assay enabled the researcher to capture and to detect the neutralizing antibodies in the samples. So in this study, uh, the Professor Wang Lingfa utilized the SARS-CoV-2 uh, related materials they provided by GenScript. Additionally, uh, GenScript also developed our own um, ELISA kit in order to detect the host IgM or IgG antibodies against the SARS-CoV-2 virus in the human blood. So currently, all of our um, serial based uh, tests are in the process uh, to, uh, to get the FDA approvals for detections. So in a nutshell, GenScript actually provides a complete solution for a molecular-based diagnosis and a serology-based diagnosis assay, ranging from providing the primers and probes for qPCR assay development, a plasmid and pseudo VD of a positive control, as well as we have our own qPCR detection kit. On the other hand, we also provide antibodies and the proteins for assay development as well as uh, our own ELISA application kit. So here are the services and products that are provided by GenStrip, as I mentioned earlier. So for those that who are interested, you may access to this website uh, for more detailed information. Now, I would like to switch gear a little bit uh, to discuss about the current progress of the vaccine and drug development against the COVID-19 disease. Given the rapid spread of this virus, uh, the researchers are in a race in order to develop the vaccine to protect the humans from uh, the disease and uh, to come up with the, uh, the therapy in order to treat the patients. So in late January, the Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness Innovations had announced the initiations of three programs to develop the vaccines against the novel coronavirus. And this, uh, the objective of this program was to advance the vaccine development. Uh, according to the report, uh, the vaccine development is built upon the pre-existing partnership that include the Inovio, uh, who aims to uh, 
uh, deliver the BLM vaccine candidates against the SARS-CoV-2 virus. Uh, additionally, they are currently in the phase two trial to deliver uh, the DNA-based vaccine candidates against the MERS virus. The University of Queensland has uh, been reported to have their first uh, vaccine candidates available uh, against the SARS-CoV-2 virus. And also recently, a new partnership has been formed with Moderna who aim to deliver the mRNA-based vaccine against the SARS-CoV-2 virus. So I believe now uh, you, you guys uh, definitely have the questions of how this, uh, when is this vaccine available? So, sorry, when is this vaccine available? So as I mentioned, uh, I came across this article they published just uh, probably a couple of weeks ago. In this article, it described that the Novavax, which is a Maryland-based uh, company, as several candidates that are ready to enter the human trial this spring. And then the Moderna, which I mentioned earlier, uh, has entered a phase one clinical trial on uh, March 16. And then uh, on the other side of the world, uh, the China has received a regulatory clearance in order to start the phase one trial with a non replicating vector-based vaccine. And uh, there are other phase one trials of the nucleic acid vaccines are expected to start in April. So the vaccine development actually poses the challenges to the researchers. For an example, uh, the spike proteins uh, is a key promising immunogen for protection. However, the optimizing the antigen design is critical in order to ensure the optimal immune response. And also, uh, therefore, there are debates going around whether or not to target uh, the full length of the proteins or just uh, the receptor binding domain. And second, uh, the adverse effects of vaccinations may be a concern. Uh, the previous preclinical experience with the vaccine candidates for SARS and MERS has raised the concern of exacerbating the lung disease. And this adverse effect was due to uh, the type 2 helper T cell response. Therefore, testing in a suitable animal model and a rigorous safety monitoring in the clinical trial will be critical. And uh, lastly, uh, the most, uh, also what we are concerned the most is whether or not uh, this potential durations of the immunity is currently still unknown. And also whether a single dose vaccine is sufficient for a lifetime protection is still remain to be solved. And therefore, uh, the researchers are currently working hard in order to address all of these challenges that are listed here. However, uh, currently there are over 100 companies and institutes involved in the vaccine and drug development globally. So the vaccine candidates uh, involve the DNAs, uh, the genetic engineered uh, virus vector that carry the SARS-CoV-2 gene, the recombinant proteins, and the mRNA-based vaccine. On the other hand, with the understanding of the uh, SARS-CoV-2 structure and the entry mechanism, the researchers are working on uh, the antiviral drugs by developing the proteins or the antibody to block uh, the bindings between the ACE2 receptor as well as, uh, sorry, the as well as, uh, ACE2 receptor is here and uh, the receptor binding domain. So um, actually, there are several studies have shown the feasibility of uh, using these um, blocking proteins or we call it a neutralizing antibody uh, to, uh, to treat uh, this uh, coronavirus. So here I show you uh, this article, uh, they have shown that uh, in uh, this article described the feasibility of using the neutral, uh, neutralizing antibody in order to reduce the lung pathogen significantly in the non-human primates after the MERS virus infection. So here are a list of uh, the companies that are involved in the vaccine and drug development that are against uh, COVID-19. The Sanofi, uh, which utilize the recombinant DNA platform to rapidly manufacture the large amounts of the coronavirus antigen that could be formulated to stimulate the immune system against the virus. GeneRex utilize uh, the immune system activation technology to generate a series of a synthetic amino acid peptides that can imitate the virus epitope. And recently, a partnership has been formed between the Arcturus and the Duke NUS in Singapore that utilize the STAR technology platform 
and uh, in combination with the self-replicating RNA with the lunar uh, are formed in order to produce the proteins inside the human body. The VIR has synthesized more than 350 silenced RNA and the antibody against the SARS-CoV-2 virus. Last but not least, a partnership has been formed between the Johnson & Johnson and the BARDA in order to leverage the manufacturing uh, capability and uh, to accelerate uh, the adenovirus development and production in order to speed up uh, the vaccine development against the SARS-CoV-2 virus. Apart from the vaccine development, um, there are numerous of the biopharma giants uh, who have started to investigate the efficacy and efficiency of the pre-existing drug in order to treat uh, the disease. They include the use of the Remdesivir uh, from Gilead, the hydroxychloroquine uh, from the Sanofi, and then uh, the Lopinavir and, uh, and Ritonavir combinations from the FV and Vaxitans. And these lists are actually still, uh, still increasing. So here I show you, uh, you know, uh, an article they published in uh, the Genetic Engineering uh, and Biotechnology on the uh, 18th of March have shown that there were more than 60 of the treatments are under development. On uh, 9th of April, there was another article that published uh, in which it described that there were a total of 78 of the vaccine and drugs under development. And a more recent study that published on the 13th of April uh, described that there were more than 160 COVID-19 drugs and vaccine candidates in the, uh, under development. So this number is still increasing. So while the researchers are scrambling for the vaccine and drug development, uh, JetScript has spent no efforts in order to help the researchers to accelerate their study with our in-house uh, capabilities. So here I show you a classic example, the partnership that forms between GenStrip and Novavax. So the Novavax aims to deliver the next generation's uh, vaccines uh, that is known as a nanoparticle vaccines in a serious infection disease. So the objective of this project was to insert the full length of the spike gene uh, of the coronavirus into a particular virus in order to produce the coronavirus spike proteins that is folded and sugar-coated as if the human cells have produced it. Technically speaking, we know that it's very laborious in order to synthesize a large gene size with good quality. However, using our in-house technology, we complete the gene synthesis uh, with good quality in three days. And uh, this piece of work has been published in Nature. And recently, um, another article that published by uh, Gillette uh, in uh, in JBC Press, uh, in G JBC Press, in which they describe uh, the render civil uh, could potentially used to treat uh, the disease. So the render civil um, can block the replication mechanisms of the COVID-19 um, by mimicking the building block that fool the RNA-dependent RNA polymerase. So in this study, uh, the GILID utilized uh, the SARS-CoV-2 and the SARS-CoV-2 related materials provided by Jane Street. And then uh, recently, uh, a new partnership has been formed between Stamina Therapeutics and Jane Street in order to uh, speed up the mRNA vaccine development that against uh, the COVID-19 disease. So uh, the Jane Street uh, has uh, provides the one-stop antibody drug development solutions, include the antibody drug discovery, the antibody engineering, and the other services using our vacant single cell platform. And by using this platform, it allows to shorten the period of time that required in order for the antibody drug discovery. So um, there are other services and products that support from Genstrip. So we have numerous platforms uh, that, uh, that cater for the antibody drug discovery, and then are several platforms for the in vitro bioassay development. And we have our peptide library uh, services for peptide screening and a custom oligo pool for synthesis of thousands of user device sequences. So last but not least, I would like to put up this slide that shows that GenStrip provides a wide variety of uh, the services and products as I listed here. 
in a fast, reliable, and efficient manner for uh, the researchers to speed up their research in the vaccines and drug development. So I thank you for your attention and I welcome any questions. Thank you.